Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm to Dr. Erniza. My name is Firas. We are from Group 20 and today we will be presenting our mini project on cooling water network. Before we begin, let me explain the background of our project. The requirement of this project was to consider a cooling water network from one of our plant design project as the case study. Therefore, our group has selected the oily wastewater treatment plant design as the case study in completing this project. From the problem statement, it is clearly stated that based on the current design of the cooling water network, the supply temperature is set to 20 degrees Celsius. Besides that, the cooling water return temperature has been specified to 35 degrees Celsius and it is not reused in the system. Thus, the main objective of our project is to design and propose a more optimal cooling water network as based on the current design, the cooling water network may not have been operating optimally. In addition, from the proposed design cooling network, we will calculate the cost saving based on the difference of the cost between the current design and the proposed design cooling network. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Hatim. Before we proceed any further, I will go through the overview of this presentation. I will first be explaining the PFD for our selected plant design before going through the calculations to determine the cooling water temperatures. Next, my teammates will be going through the current cooling water network which might not be operating optimally. Then, we will be going through the pinch analysis that was carried out in detail. Based on the pinch analysis, we will then go through the proposed new cooling water network for our plant design. Finally, we will be explaining the cost and energy savings before concluding our presentation. The first step of this project was to evaluate the process flow diagram of the selected plant design. As mentioned by Firas earlier, this is the PFD for an oily wastewater treatment plant. The plant design that we selected incorporates four coolers that will be shown in the PFD here. The first cooler, E101, is used to cool down the water from the decanter separator to be used as the solvent in the absorption unit operating at 40 degrees Celsius. Next, E102 is used to cool down the compressed biogas at 144.83 degrees Celsius to the operating temperature of the absorption unit at 40 degrees Celsius. The third cooler, E103, is used to cool down the concentrated brine from the evaporator at 110 degrees Celsius to be 35 degrees Celsius, which is the optimum temperature to carry out the sodium chloride precipitation in the crystallizer. The final cooler, E104, is placed at the end of the plant and is used to cool down the hot water coming from the reboiler in the desorption unit at 99.65 degrees Celsius. The water is cooled down to 40 degrees Celsius before being sent to the equalization tank to be discharged. Based on the PFD, the supply temperature of the hot stream and its targeted temperature is tabulated as shown in the table here. According to the Pinch Analysis book written by CanMet Energy in Canada, for chemical processes and where utilities are used for heat transfer, delta T mean values are typically in the range of 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. Hence, for this project, we have assumed the delta T mean to be 10 degrees Celsius. The inlet temperature of the cooling water is determined by subtracting the targeted temperature of the hot stream with the delta T mean. The same procedure is carried out for the outlet temperature as well, whereby the supply temperature of the hot stream is subtracted with the T mean. For example, for E101, the targeted temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. Subtracting it with T mean at 10 degrees Celsius, the inlet temperature of the cooling water is determined to be 30 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, the supply temperature at 50.74 degrees Celsius is subtracted with T mean at 10 degrees Celsius to determine the outlet temperature, which is at 40.74 degrees Celsius. The same calculations are carried out for each coolers respectively. The value of the heat duty Q in kilowatt and the heat capacity Cp in kilowatt per temperature is obtained from the completed simulation model carried out in Aspen Plus software. These values are used as the basis of calculations for the pinch analysis. Now, I will pass the presentation to Kyra. Assalamualaikum, I bid to Dr. Aniza. My name is Nora Kaira and I will be presenting the current cooling water network based on the problem statement to prove whether it is optimal or not in terms of its cooling water mass flow rate. So, uh, the design of the cooling water network is presented in the parallel configuration as shown in the figure below. From the problem statement, the temperature given for the water cooling water supply and return is R 
20 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius respectively. So in order to get the mass flow rate of the cooling water required for this design is by uh, calculating the CP total. So the CP total by, can be calculated based on the summation of CPT and in which the temperature is the outlet temperature of each cooler. CP is calculated based on the Q and delta T uh, that is obtained from the Aspen plus simulation and dividing the summation of CPT with uh, TCWR give the CP total and the mass flow rate total of the current design work based on the information from the public statement. So from this uh, design network, the mass flow rate is 0.5879 kg per second. From the previous slide, the mass flow rate required for the current design of cooling water network is 0.5879 kg per second. That is based on the TCWR of 35 degrees C. However, the actual TCWR based on the PFD is not 35 degrees C. So we need to calculate the CP total to get the TCWR and also the cooling water flow rate uh, by using the reverse calculation. So the temperature is reversely calculated based on the same equation by first calculating the actual CP total. The actual CP total obtained is 0.9393 kW per degree C while the temperature of cooling water return is 91.57 uh, degree C which is approximately 55 degrees C higher than what is stated in the problem statement. So from this value, we can calculate the mass flow rate, the actual mass flow rate, which is 0.2247 kg per second. So from this value, these two value from the, uh, from the actual TCWR and also TCWR from the equation, from the question, uh, there is an excess of cooling water flow rate with 0.3332 kg per second. So, by this value, we can say that the current cooling water network is not optimal due to the excess cooling water flow rate of 0.3332 kg per second. Assalamualaikum and good day. I beat to Dr. Eliza. I'm Syed Amir and I will be presenting on the pinch analysis that was carried out in this project. As discussed by Hatim earlier, the cooling water properties for each cooler was retrieved based on the plan design. To propose an optimal cooling water network, pinch analysis must first be carried out. The outlet temperature for cooling water for each cooler is sorted in ascending order. The cumulative duty is calculated to find the total duty for this cooling water network. A graph has been developed to illustrate the properties for each cooler in terms of temperature against its duty. In order to develop a composite curve, the outlet for each cooler is assumed to be the inlet for the next cooler. Thus, the temperature outlet for each cooler will be the temperature inlet for the next cooler consecutively until the final cooler which is the E102 which has the highest outlet temperature. Based on this new data, a limiting cooling water composite curve is drawn. A pinch line is drawn from 20 degrees centigrade, which is the temperature of cooling water supply, through the minimum point of the cooling water line, and the interception indicates the Q pinch or pinch duty and pinch temperature for this cooling water network. Therefore, the Q pinch is determined to be 60.7070 kW and pinch temperature is 100 degrees centigrade based on the pinch line. From this information, the minimum CP can be calculated by dividing Q pinch with the temperature difference between pinch temperature and cooling water supply temperature and the value is 0.7588 kW per degree centigrade. By using CP mean, the minimum mass flow rate for cooling water can be retrieved by dividing the minimum CP with CP water and the value is 0.1815 kg per second or 0.6535 ton per second. Besides, the cooling water return temperature can be known by plugging in the cooling water supply temperature, total duty and the minimum CP in the following equation and the value is 100.88 degrees centigrade. Based on this information, the new optimal design with series configuration can be developed that's all from me. I'll pass the floor to Surya Shovanesh. Thank you. 
Thank you, Syed. I'm Sura Shobnish and I'll explain the proposed cooling water network design. We'll start with the below pinch. The difference between the pinch temperature and the cooling water supply temperature gives us delta T, which is 80 degrees Celsius. As you can see, for below pinch, there is three coolers, E101, E104, and E103 exist totally below pitch. Therefore, using the formula Q is equals to Cp delta T, we can calculate Cp or the heat capacity as shown. Next, for the above pinch is from the pinch temperature to the maximum temperature. So, the delta T now is at 34.88 degrees Celsius. For above pinch, there is only one cooler which is E102 exists totally above pinch. Therefore, similarly, the Cp can be calculated as shown. The Cp of the cooling water return is at 0 0.588, which is similar with the Cp of the cooling water supply. And now that we have the below pinch and above pinch design, we can combine both to get this overall design. As you can see, there are three coolers existing totally below pinch and there's one cooler existing totally above pinch. As shown, Cp which is equals to 0 0.7397 is the remaining outlet from the below pinch which would be directly returned to the cooling tower. And that is why the cooling water return temperature is now at 100.88 degrees Celsius which is lower compared to the above pinch cooling water return temperature. Here we have a clearer picture of the overall design. We supply fresh cooling water to cooler E101, E104 and E103. For cooler E102, it reuses 0.0191 Cp of water from below pinch, whereas the remaining Cp would be directly returned to the cooling tower. The temperature in and out for every coolers are feasible as it does not exceed the maximum temperature based on our process flow diagram. Thank you, Firas, on to you. Hi, it's me again. As the final requirement of this project, we will now proceed to the evaluation of cost and energy saving between the current design and proposed optimal design of the cooling network. There are a few necessary assumptions that are used to complete the calculation. Firstly, since the water treatment plant is assumed to be located in Melaka, for the cost of cooling water, we have used the tariff rate that has been fixed by Syarikat Air Melaka Berhad for industrial area as shown in the table. We also have assumed that the plant operates at 24 hours per day and 7,920 hours per year. Besides that, the value of density used in the calculation is 997 kg per meter cube. Moving on to the cost analysis, based on the mass flow rate calculated earlier, the cost of the cooling water for the current design is approximately 36,000 ringgit per year. However, for the proposed optimal design which only utilizes 0.1815 kg per second of cooling water, the cost is only 11,000 ringgit per year. This shows that the, the proposed design cooling network can save nearly 25,000 ringgit per year with a huge percentage reduction of approximately 70%. In terms of energy analysis, the CP of current design cooling network is 33,625.2 kW per Kelvin as compared with proposed design with only 10,383.2 Kelvin per kilowatt. This shows that the proposed design cooling network need less mass flow rate of cooling water for the similar type of system. Therefore, the efficiency of the cooling system increased with a reduction in the overall flow rate of the cooling water. In conclusion, the two objectives of this project have been achieved. They are designing an optimum cooling network was designed as well as determining the cost saving between the two designs. With that, we have come to the end of our presentation. On behalf of my teammates and classmates, I would like to thank you 
for an amazing semester and we hope to see you again next semester. Till then, take care and stay safe. Goodbye.